Caring for a patient with a chest tube, part two. You always want to assess the tubing. You want to look for kinks or closed clamps. Clamps should only be used if ordered by the healthcare provider. Clamps and kinks can cause pressure buildup and lead to a tension pneumothorax. Next is check the suction setup. In a dry system, you want to check the suction dial and the suction indicator bellow should be visible and extended. Where in a wet system, you want to make sure the water level for the suction matches the order. Next is about the water seal chamber. Titling in the water seal chamber is expected, but continue continuous bubbling can indicate a leak. If you see this and it's a new finding, you want to let the healthcare provider know right away. The collection chamber may be defected or need a replacement. All right, next you want to monitor and document drainage. You want to make sure you mark the drainage level in the chamber at the start of your shift with the date and time so you can accurately measure the output throughout your shift. You want to take a look at the appearance of the drainage. Is it serous, sanguineous, or purulent? You always want to document your assessment. And lastly, you want to notify the provider for concerning findings. Some concerning findings would be a sudden increase or decrease in drainage, change in drainage appearance, for example, if it becomes bright red or purulent, continuous bubbling, remember this suggests an air leak, and signs of a tension pneumothorax. That's all for part two of caring for a patient with a chest tube. Happy studying future nurses.